So you, as a presenter, hey, it's time for you to upgrade your skills. How do you give a presentation without a projector? Eh, check it out. Great ways to use diagrams on a whiteboard. As a presenter, there's sometimes your projector or a projector screen is just not available. And what you're gonna be put, the position you're gonna be put in is now you get to use an easel and you get to use a marker. Now, if you have a choice between an easel and a whiteboard, definitely choose an easel because you want to use the big jumbo markers because they just look good. Whiteboard markers, you know how they turn out. They just don't last and there's these teeny little skinny lines and after a while it just gets all messy. So choose an easel and now, now here's something to think about. You're going to have to draw your diagrams. You know, you have to draw on the board to teach the principles that you have to teach. Now I've designed this to teach you four different ways to teach the same principle. And these four different directions of drawing out on paper really capture the audience because it addresses the different learning styles that are in the room. You know, when you have an audience, they're not all the same learning style. You have your visual learners, you have the people who like the action step list, they like to, there's people who like equations, there's people who like the engagement of the room. There's really about seven different learning styles in your audience. And for you to be a better presenter, you need to be more dynamic in how your information is being given to your audience. So let's go through four of the four different ways that you can actually draw out a diagram on paper. The first one is, is you can use shapes and arrows and stick figures, right? It's simple, all kinds of shapes, all kinds of arrows, and it's okay if it's not a perfect shape. And, and you can sit there on the board and try to make it perfect if you want, but you don't have to be perfect with this stuff. People are very, very, very lenient on how we do our drawings. So you got shapes, arrows, stick figures, all different kinds. Now, this is super easy, super simple. And a cool part about this is you now get to label each one of these. So for example, I could label the the star as a goal or I could label the star as the problem or this could be the destination. I could call it all different kinds of things. The arrow could resemble progress, it could resemble performance, it could resemble the journey. So my language and my definition of each of the objects on this paper is what gives it life. Never, ever, ever let your audience interpret this in their own language. You give it the label you want it to have. And then all the way through your presentation, you use the exact same definition. So you pick your shapes, give them names, and now people will attach those names to those shapes in your presentation. The other kind of learner you have in the room really likes to have a list. And when you go to make a list, like each one of these squares represents a whole page. You know, I, I broke it down in these small four quadrants just so you can see all four of them at the same time. But an, uh, there are a certain percentage of your audience that loves having a list. And this particular learner, when you draw this out, it actually doesn't make sense to them because they can't see the steps. But these type of people, they want you to break it down in step one, step two, step three, step four. They want you to give it to them in the form of steps. This particular learning style, they don't want steps. They wanna have the whole big picture. They wanna see the whole thing together. So imagine if you only did this and you kept doing these kind of pictures over and over and over again. Well, if you keep doing this, you're gonna lose this person. And this is a good percentage of the room. About 20 to 30% of your room likes this. 
So you can take the same principle and now break it down into steps. Like, what is this step? What is this? What is this? What is this? But when you do this, you want to use between three and five steps. Now, if you're going to go as long as like 10 steps, just be sure that as you write down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, that they're all equally spaced and equally sized. As soon as you start getting over five to seven on a paper, they can get out of proportion. And when you write one of those steps and it looks smaller than the other ones, then people make, they think that it means it's less important. So for you, you know, one through five down the side of a paper, you can write it pretty big. And so it's easy for the audience to see. Now look at this, this is one sheet of paper right here. That's a big diagram. You know, when you go to write on your board, make sure that you're writing big so they can see it. And so you got shapes, arrows, stick figures. Now you have a list that you can create. And now you've satisfied two different learning styles in the room. The next one has to do with equations. This plus this equals this. That's an equation. And you can find that there's equations in the content that you have to teach. And you can take, and where here these are action steps, you could take this action step plus this action step equals this particular result. But you get to decide what you put in this equation. And you could put this plus this equals that. You could put this times this equals that. I mean, you get to really get creative in how you build equations. There's a small percentage of people in the room, about 15%, who really love equations. Now, you wouldn't write out all the instructions in here. You know, you wouldn't put every, all the information there. Maybe you put a letter that represents a word that then tells the equation. So let's put, let's put, um, uh, let's put positivity plus motivation equals success. Positivity plus motivation equals success. Now you can teach from that equation. You can just keep referencing the letters and then you've labeled it with a particular word. And now people like, there's a certain percentage of the people in the room who will write down that equation and that's what stands out in their mind. To other people, that stands out in their mind. To other people, this stands out in their mind. But for me as a presenter, I'm not gonna get caught up in this is the only way I can teach is with this particular way of doing diagrams. The last one over here, this one's kind of fun. This one's really fun. You get to be really super creative with this. This is called frameworks. And frameworks looks like this. Live, love, laugh, learn. So all four of those start with the, the same first letter and all four of those you now can teach about how to fully live. And then you can go to the next part and teach how to fully love and then teach how to fully laugh and get into all your joy of your, who you are. And then you can teach the principles of learning. So all that education all comes back to the framework, to some percentage of your room, of the audience that you're speaking to, this is what they're gonna remember the most. Now look at this, four different ways. That's a dynamic presenter. When I, when I watch people present with paper and marker, and or a whiteboard and marker, when I see them do a presentation and they get stuck on one particular way of doing their diagrams, I look around to see how that's coming across to the audience. And I'll look up and down the rows to see who's taking notes. And they think, the presenter thinks, because they drew it out and it's like this, that everybody's gonna write it down. And you can look up and down the row, not everybody wrote it down. For you to be a dynamic speaker and capture the attention of the audience, even when you don't have a projector, you can capture the audience because of how dynamic you are in the different ways you can 
take information and put it on an easel. Now, here's a secret for you. Here's a secret for you. Don't do two or three of these in a row. Do this one, do this one, do this one, do this one, then come back and do this one. But get a nice variety happening and to where by the time you ever come back to do a style like this again, they've already gone through three or four more styles. And so when their type pops up again, you'll notice that people are like, oh good, the presenter still cares about me. They still know I'm here because that's my favorite way of learning. So serve the audience well by being prepared to talk about your content and your topic and be able to deliver it in four different ways. This is powerful. It also stretches you in your ability to be able to do this, but it sure helps in engaging that whole audience. Out of the 5,800 presentations that I've done, it's taken me a couple years to figure out like this really matters. And for you, let me just save you a ton of time. Figure out four ways right here to teach the exact same principle. Four ways, these four ways, but you're teaching the same principle. So if I'm talking about one principle and I can draw it out in four different ways, now I've just captured the attention of the whole entire audience. One more style that's not on here that you really can't draw is storytelling. That captures the rest of the audience. But that one I'm not gonna draw, that's just where you now become a better storyteller. And I love teaching people how to be great storytellers and dynamic in their presentation. And this, if you step in and start this, you're gonna notice you get more compliments and you get more people coming up to you wanting to learn more from you because this shows you have more dynamics than the common presenter out there. Too many people are stuck in one way of doing diagrams, but not you. You know more and you're ready to go out there and make a bigger impact. Hey, super cool, right? I know, the content I just shared with you is gonna help you even be more dynamic. And we know that as presenters, it's all about the students doing better. So to support you, click the link below, check out what I have for you here. Maybe you're ready for an upgrade. Maybe some storytelling skills, more ideas about how to do your presentations, and really, let's move you up to that next level so you can impact and influence more people. Before you go, click subscribe and click the link and see if this next step is for you.